If you have concerns about protecting your uh, copyright on your own work or that you may have infringed somebody else's, uh, you will greatly benefit from making the effort to get actual legal advice, which this is not. Uh, meanwhile, if you'd like to learn more on your own, the copyright.gov uh, website uh, is a very good place uh, to start. So, how many of you are familiar with uh, Father Guido Sarducci's Five Minute University? Oh, you're not. Oh, I was going to bring a video and I thought, oh, well, everybody's seen it. Uh, anyway, it's, it's a solution to higher education's problem. You turn people out in five minutes and they know everything they would have known five years after a four year degree. So this is my seven takeaway items for this 15 minute copyright course. Uh, there is such a thing as copyright. It's in the Constitution. Uh, one of the few professions that is constitutionally protected. There is a Copyright Act and a Copyright Office. There are international treaties. It's designed to protect a creative person's rights because you need their permission to use their work. There is something called fair use. And finally, the copyright scheme has been severely challenged by the move to digitization. So thank you very much. And now for our next speaker. <laughs> um, I was asked to be sure to mention fair use, problems of plagiarism, and the impact of digitization on copyright, as well as explain the Copyright Act. So to make sure we get through at least those three subjects, it's best we start there. There are some uh, modest uses of material that's copyright called fair use that do not constitute a copyright violation. The fact that you think what you're doing is fair is irrelevant. There is a statutory test that involves four factors, all of which are vague, and most of which, uh, and, and all of which, uh, must be satisfied. As a result, there is often no lawyer who could tell you whether your fair use defense is going to prevail when you're sued. That you're using the copyright material for research or teaching may help, but it's far from decisive. It's harder to show fair use for creative writing than for news reports. How much have you used? The entire poem? The portion that everyone bought the expose to read? And most important, what is the impact of your use on the owner's income, such as copying large portions of a textbook for your students? Now let's briefly compare plagiarism, copyright, and social norms. There is no fair use in plagiarism. No matter how little you use, if you don't attribute your source, it's plagiarism. However, as we've just seen, it may not constitute a copyright violation. What if you don't make an actual copy of another's work, but just use their idea? That's also a plagiarism no-no. It is not, however, a copyright violation, as long as you don't copy their expression of the idea, because ideas can't be copyrighted. If three-fourths of your doctoral dissertation was quoted passages from others' writing, so long as the sources were properly credited, you probably wouldn't get the PhD, but at least you wouldn't be charged with having plagiarized. You would have, however, violated the Copyright Act, whether you attributed your sources or not. In addition, of course, the social norms of the academy also call for attribution. Technology has a way of racing far ahead of the law, and so it is with copyright. Digitization and the internet have made it easier for both the creators of content and the users to violate the letter as well as the spirit of the copyright law. Copies of copies, whether of music or print, tend to be degraded in quality when they are analog. 
Hard copies, books, phonograph records, and tapes, or photographs, are more difficult to distribute. Digital copies are perfect copies and can be distributed easily, cheaply, instantaneously to the four billion people with internet connections. Copyright violations by users are widespread and difficult to discover, prosecute, and punish. But users aren't the only violators. Digitization offers the owners opportunities to restrict the users' copyright rights as well. Larry Lessig makes a distinction between what he calls East Coast Code and West Coast Code. The volumes of legislative enactments like the Code of Iowa or the United States Code uh, are East Coast Code, the law. The West Coast Code, the computer programs, the software that can open or restrict our access to the Internet's offerings. Here are some examples of what are called copyright owners, technological protective measures, or TPMs. You may have encountered some of them. Software can prevent your copying a fair use portion of a DVD. It can automatically delete the ebook you borrowed from the library after a fixed time. It can create firewalls and encrypt content, require passwords and payment for access. Virtually anything that an owner can imagine doing can be programmed, even if the result is that some West Coast computer code is repealing portions of the East Coast code. Now the copyright law. Uh, origins you wanted to know about. It started with the uh, king who controlled who could have a printing press. Uh, that worked pretty well for the printers. And after that, uh, the grant, uh, that sort of tiff of the time, was abolished. The first Copyright Act was created, the Statute of Anne, 1709. It's in our original Constitution and Acts of Congress of 1790, 1909, 1976, and numerous additional amendments. This is the constitutional language. I've divided it into ends and means because it's important not to confuse the two. The constitutional purpose is not to enrich the Disney Corporation and other media oligopolis. The purpose is to promote the progress of science with patents and useful arts with copyright. Over the years, the term of the copyright, originally 14 years, has been extended largely as a result of corporate lobbying to what is today life plus 70 years. What's worse, the Supreme Court has ruled in the Eldred case that there is no limit to Congress' ability to extend the term something that I believe flies in the face of the original drafters' language, their intent, and their purpose. One reaction to this has been the alternative Creative Commons licenses, which some of you may use uh, to protect your work, that enable you to attach various conditions uh, on others' use, instead of being limited to the stark choice between the copyright acts provisions or no protection uh, at all. Uh, here now are some more general observations about copyright. It is obviously a restriction on free speech because you're not free to speak or write another's words without permission. It's a part of what we call intellectual property along with, though different from, patents and trademarks. You can't copy uh, copyright facts or ideas Although the term has been repeatedly extended, once it does expire, you lose all your rights. Anyone can use your creation. To qualify for copyright, it's not enough that you've worked very hard producing it and put in a lot of hours. It must be an original creative work. It must be fixed in a tangible medium. What does that mean? A piece of paper or a hard drive. The types of creative works that can be copyrighted have expanded over time from books to as much as choreography and film. 
Section 102 of the Act describes what can be copyright, as just discussed, and in addition, note that if you have been writing notes during this presentation, whether on paper, a laptop, or smartphone, they are already copyright in your name. As soon as your work is fixed, which it is as soon as you write it, it is copyright. You don't have to register it with the Copyright Office. Now, if you anticipate that your notes from today may someday be of great economic value, you might want to register them because that's something you have to do in order to sue someone for violating your copyright. So who owns the copyright? Well, you do, the creator, the author, the artist, the composer, unless, as is often the case, you have either contracted with someone or your job is such that the creation is within the scope of your employment. In that case, it can be described as a work made for hire, as would be true for a print or television journalist. So what do you get? It's pretty much limited to what's in section 106. You can, of course, make and distribute copies of your book or article, perform your play, put your painting on exhibition, but there are two additional things to know. You need not give away or sell the entire copyright. You can contract or license separately the right to publish an article in a magazine made up of an excerpt from your book, the hardback book, the paperback, the e-book, the movie rights, all can be separately licensed or contracted. There is also a first sale doctrine, meaning that once you sell your painting, or a copy of your book, the purchaser can do with it whatever they want, including selling it or destroying it. The French, however, recognize a concept of moral rights, which gives the creator more protection. Copyright violation is said to be an infringement of the copyright. Maybe you had no permission at all to use the material. Maybe the permission you had was limited in the amount you could use, or where you could distribute it, or the form it could take the hardback book rights, but not the paperback uh, or magazine rights. Note that it must be copied. If the defendant can prove that she would never have had an opportunity to know about or see the copyright work, that might be a defense. If the in infringer attributed and credited the source, it's still a copyright violation, but that might reduce the damages. If you've registered your work, and can sue, depending on the circumstances, you may be able to get a court order requiring the infringer to stop, which is called an injunction, or you can destroy the infringing copies, or have them pay you damages plus any profits they made plus the cost of their attorney. And if the infringement was willful and profitable, it may even warrant criminal fines and imprisonment. So there it is, our seven takeaway points again. There is copyright, it's in the Constitution and our laws, it protects the creative community, there is such a thing as fair use, although nobody knows precisely what it is, and both the copyright owners and content users have caught copyright in their crossfire. So thanks for inviting me, and good luck. <laughs>